Am I the a-hole for asking to be paid for six months of constant dog sitting? My sister Alice owns a flat with her husband and they have two dogs. Alice got a job abroad, so they're moving there. They don't know what to do with the two dogs yet, so their current plan is to move abroad and wait a few months, up to six, to decide if they even like it there or if they want to come back home. If they like it there, they will try to find a way to move the dogs there with them, but if it's not possible, they will rehome them in our country. I'm 21 years old, still attending university, and I live with my mom. I really want to move out and live alone, but I can't afford it. Alice made me an offer. I can live in their flat for free for six months, no rent, no utilities, but I have to take care of their dogs. I'll have to walk them for hours every day, take them to the vet, etc. She said they will pay for anything dog-related and will pay for doggy daycare for a few days during my exam periods or if I want to go on a vacation. I like her offer. Her flat is much closer to my university, but taking care of two dogs is a lot of work. I think it's reasonable to want to be paid for the work I do. If I didn't have to take care of the dogs, I could get a part-time job if I wanted to. So I feel like I should be reimbursed for that. Alice and our mom says that being allowed to live in her flat for free is already enough and I'm being unreasonable and money hungry. When they told me this, I laughed at them and told my sister she could try to find another dog sitter then and I know that I'm her best option. Now they're mad at me. Am I the a-hole? In the comments, you're the a-hole. You will live rent-free and utilities-free alone in a flat closer to your uni. Try googling how much you'd have to cough up in cash to do the same and BAM! That's how much you are paid for dog sitting. With current economy situation, I imagine that some won't come up low. Definitely you're the a-hole here for a complete lack of self-awareness. You can't have your cake and then expect your sister to pay you to look after the dogs in exchange for that. If you don't want to look after the dogs, get your own flat, pay for it, and deal with the stress of struggling to have a roof over your head versus taking dogs to walk twice a day for 15 to 20 minutes. Plus, working on top of doing her studies? Spoiled once it all, free lodging, no expenses, and money to burn. You're the a-hole, big time. Let your sister know that I'm available though. OP's going to be pissed when they actually do find someone else to watch the dogs, saying, You promised I could live in your apartment. I need to be near a school. And if the person watching the dogs doesn't live there, no one's living there. I don't see why I can't use your apartment. There is a massive tantrum pending. You do realize how much rent for even a basic apartment costs, right? Plus water, electricity, and internet bills. And on top of that, there will be no personal costs for the dogs. That is way more money in bills than you would be getting paid in dog sitting money anyways, even if she did for some reason agree, and you really wanted to move out, right? Well, unfortunately, now you are not getting that option because she is going to get another sitter now that you have shown yourself off to be ungrateful of an offer most wouldn't give, and kind of an idiot for burning such a good offer. Plenty of people would kill for six months of free living with the only cost of spending time taking care of dogs. You are very much replaceable there. You're the a-hole. Honestly, can't decide if OP is entitled or clueless. I guess have fun finding that part-time job and paying rent and utilities at a different place. What's crazy about OP's logic is they probably still have time to get a part-time job and take care of the dogs. Unless these dogs are puppies... The dogs should be trained enough to leave for a few hours a couple nights a week to go to work. I'm not saying OP can work a 40 hours a week job, go to school and care for the puppies, but he could pick up 15 hours a week somewhere, and then that's just spending money since the sister is covering all the bills. And now on to the update. Okay, I screwed up. I really thought Alice didn't have any other options. My brother just told me that she is now talking to our cousin, who lives two hours away but wants to move to our city. They are even talking about possibly making it a long-term thing, and cousin being allowed to stay after the free six months is up for reduced rent, only having to pay an equal amount to their mortgage, which would normally only rent him a room. In the comments, so OP admits it's not that they are dumb and legitimately thought the deal was unfair, OP was being greedy and selfish assuming the sister had no other options so OP could extort her. 
I'm glad sister immediately found another option. I've had something similar happen to me, and it's so satisfying showing somebody how easy it is to get a better offer. My husband thinks that I baby trapped him despite the baby being planned. Please help. My husband, male 35, and I, female 32, have been married for seven years. He lived next door and we just clicked. It was like a fairy tale. One thing I've always thought made our marriage so strong was our friendship with each other and our trust in one another, although now my husband seems to think otherwise. Recently, my husband found out that his friend Jeff, male 34, has been baby trapped. Basically, Jeff's wife, female 32, stopped taking the pill and fell pregnant a few months into their relationship and only came clean after the wedding. Jeff came from a very conservative family, which his wife knew, and so he felt obligated to marry her after the pregnancy. Unfortunately, he also now feels obligated to stay regardless of the clearly messed up dynamic because he feels that he has made a vow and will stick by his wife and child. My husband, for some reason, has been really rattled by this. I'm currently four months pregnant with our first, and my husband asked me yesterday if I was trying to baby trap him. I first laughed because I honestly thought that it was a joke. He was dead serious and doubled down, so I told him that we have already been married for seven years and a baby was not going to trap him any more than he already is. My husband did not like that answer and said there was no time limit on baby trapping and that my intentions were clearly not pure given how I was acting as if his concerns were a joke. He said he had trusted me in the past, but me laughing in his face gave him no reason to trust me now. I did not really know what he wanted or how I was meant to respond, and I said we should talk about this in the morning. Today, I woke up and my husband was gone. But I did have a nasty text from his brother, male 28, saying that I had forced my husband into this pregnancy despite it having been a joint decision. My husband is MIA and not responding to calls or texts, and now I'm wondering how on earth to go forward. Any advice is appreciated. In the comments, weird take, but I think he's getting cold feet on the pregnancy, and this is a way to save face. Same, this is his way to get out without him looking like a total asshat for abandoning a pregnant woman. He can't really get out though, that's what makes it so bizarre. The only thing he can get out of is the marriage with divorce. Honestly, OP should just send him and his brother and anyone else this post. He knows it was planned, so I don't know what's going through his head. I'd also text OP's husband that if he's so trapped by the marriage and desperate to hurt her mid-pregnancy, he can get a divorce, but he knows as well as she does that they had a good relationship and planned a baby together, so either he confesses what's made him go so loopy and mental over it suddenly, or he gets out of her life bar whatever visitations a court tells him he is allowed. She should also message his pal who was really baby trapped and explain the situation and ask that friend to go talk to him, because he obviously has gotten in the husband's head. If they actually had a good relationship and he really did want a kid, I imagine that will be a shock because right now she's probably begging and doing the opposite to get him to come back. If he doesn't, I almost feel like he's done something bad on his side that warrants the overreaction out of the blue and has just taken this idea from his friend's situation. The amount of stress sitting and alone and pregnant with no idea what your husband is doing or why, or if he will even come back, must be awful. Sounds like his friend was talking into your husband's ear. Like, it happened to him? It has to be happening to husband too. Misery loves company. His friend would hate to have a friend who is actually happy in their relationship and has a planned pregnancy to the point that he's trying to make OP's husband believe he's in the same situation. And it was fine for four months, but suddenly he's not happy and it's a trap. Has he always been a moron or is this new? I'd ask if he's cheating or something if he hasn't always been this stupid because there is something shady in his behavior. Just said this above, but after spending far too much of my time on Reddit, the one thing I've learned is that if someone has a weird overreaction like this, he's cheating. I was thinking his weird reaction showed he spent too much time on Reddit. Some of the subs think all women are out there poking holes in condoms, trying to snare mediocre men into marriage. And now on to the update. 
I'm not sure if I'm allowed to post an update here again, but I wanted to quickly update everyone who was kind enough to give me some advice. I didn't respond to anyone because my post was locked quite quickly, but I've read every single comment and message, and I'm very grateful. I realized while I was reading the comments that everyone was right. I wasn't angry enough. My husband had insulted me and our marriage in a very hurtful way, and it just didn't really register for a while. I was so confused and upset that it didn't occur to me to be angry, but I think everything just needed to sink in. In the meantime, I called my best friend, Female31, who has been such a rock in my life. She came over with some chocolate and was furious when she heard. She called her husband to the house after I had gotten everything out of my system. He's a family lawyer, and he said that he would happily represent me if I wanted to go through with a divorce. This man is a saint and will draw up divorce papers on Monday. My mother-in-law showed up with my husband in the car not long after my best friend's husband arrived, and she practically dragged him to the door. My mother-in-law said that he had showed up to theirs late last night, saying that he was certain that I was using the baby to trap him. Fortunately, my mother-in-law is a smart woman and absolutely tore him a new one before dragging him to the house today to apologize. My worm of a husband did not look me in the eyes the entire time, but said that he was scared about becoming a dad and projected his fears onto me. He said he wasn't sure if he was ready for that kind of commitment, but he will step up, as if he's some kind of hero. Ugh, I roll. I called him a coward and told him that he should stay with his parents until I'm ready to talk to him. I didn't want to say anything about the divorce papers because I didn't know what his reaction would be, but he will find out soon enough. I also showed my mother-in-law the texts from my brother-in-law and her face was like a storm cloud. I don't know what will happen there, but I am sure it will be bad. For now, I am exhausted and just want to curl up and cry. My best friend said that she'll spend the night with me and we can watch silly movies. I've also made an appointment with a therapist for the next week, but for now, I just need to rest. I am exhausted and devastated that my marriage has come crumbling down. Sorry for the sad ending, everyone. In the comments, props to your mother-in-law for telling off her son. If this does go to divorce, stay in contact with her if you can. Having an ally in a grandparent is very helpful. It's so refreshing to see a mother-in-law standing up for the right thing instead of coddling and supporting her son when he's running away from his responsibilities and hurting his wife. That was beautiful. I can easily imagine her fury when she found out why he ran away. He might be a grown man, at least on paper, but she still yelled at him like he was five, using his full name and all, that's for sure. And I would have loved to see her drag him by the ear to the car and then out of the car while mumbling angrily about how disappointed she is in him. He most definitely also got the stare that only a mum can give her kid when she's embarrassed about how they've been behaving. Once he sees those divorce papers, there will be no doubt in his mind you definitely don't want to baby trap him. Doesn't make sense. Gets married, then accuses significant other of entrapment? The far? Some people view marriage as a temporary thing from the get-go. It almost makes me wonder if he was planning on leaving. So rough of her to baby trap him with a divorce like that. Wow, imagine just ruining your entire marriage like that. I do not have the words. Imagine his buddy who hears his friend sabotaged his entire marriage because of what the buddy endured. He'd likely be confused, as Opie's husband agreed to have a baby. And imagine being any future girlfriend who hears that story. I'd go running for the hills. So he not only blew up this relationship, but basically damned every other relationship he might have from here on out. And even if he tries to hide it, his mum won't. How can I, 39 female, be a better partner and mother? Before COVID, I used to think that I'm the best example of a working mum who can handle everything and that my husband Kay is just a slightly better version of your stereotypical man-child husband who spends more time on games than with me or our kids. I work in corporate law while he works in the pharmaceutical industry, so when this all started, I was trapped at home and he was still working since it's more his field. I still maintained my usual schedule as I would at work, and my commute time was used to check up on kids and make sure they eat lunch and are attending classes. 
I did notice Kay's efforts with the kids as he took care of homework while he played his video games and did one of his only two chores, which was cooking. Little did I know how taxing cooking three meals for four can be. We were very rarely intimate, and only when I initiated, and even then, sometimes he would just say that he was tired. When we were intimate, I'd end up just doing all of the work or just get turned off by his lack of enthusiasm and effort. I honestly contemplated leaving him or just starting an affair multiple times. I was exhausted and felt like the only one putting any effort in our family and our relationship. Then last month, Kay tested positive and was quarantined in the basement for two weeks. I took time off from work since I felt like I will have even more responsibilities and it would be a nice excuse to just take a break. It was a good decision because I found out how much Kay is involved with everything. He is a far more involved parent than I am. He managed to keep these two kids happy and entertained all the time. I never thought it was this hard. On top of that, cooking is not as easy as it seems. It's very difficult to think of what to cook and making sure you can make it in time for all three meals. I don't really get a lot of the kids' homework. All of this was so long ago and so irrelevant today for me that my husband eventually had to tag in. Despite his health, he managed to play with them using video calls. He is so creative. I never really appreciated that. He roleplayed with them by pretending to be a character from a Disney TV show, while my daughter and son pretended to be Perry the Platypus and Dr. Doofenshmirtz. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. He even gave them weird tasks and scavenger hunts to keep them entertained. Had he not been involved in this, I would have just had a mental breakdown dealing with two bored kids after all I did every day. I started self-analyzing my role in the kids' life. Sure, I knew their teachers, doctors, and allergies and stuff like that, but that's the minimum. I realized that my schedule is very self-serving. We both work full-time, but I get back around 7 while he comes home by 5. When I come back, I usually see him playing video games and I would go on a run for a bit and then come back and shower and dinner would be prepared and our lunchboxes are in the fridge for the next day. After dinner, I would watch my TV shows and then meet him in bed at around 11. And if I initiate and he feels like it, then we're intimate. In this entire day, the only time I interact with the kids was during dinner. This revelation honestly shocked me. I don't even tuck them in or anything. In the morning, he wakes them up, gets them ready for school, and, when in person, drops them off before heading to work. He is also the one who picks them up. I, on the other hand, wake up leisurely, eat the breakfast already on the table, and then leave for work. During weekends, I get to have a girls' night on Saturdays and brunch on Sundays religiously, and he sometimes goes to meet his friends on Fridays, but stays in often because I make him by complaining or starting arguments as I feel neglected. After this self-analyzing, I started monitoring my husband, just hoping for a slip-up that showed that he is just as bad as me, because honestly, I couldn't take the fact that I was so hands-off. He is constantly playing and hanging with the kids. The hour of video games that I felt was so selfish of him is literally the only hour in the day that he gets to himself. When I'm watching my TV shows, he's still playing with them. Sometimes they play Minecraft. I took a peek in their world and they've made huge structures. Sometimes they play with action figures and dolls. He's so engrossed into it that it's like he's one of the kids. He does all of this while sitting on the ground next to me with them. All the times I felt like he doesn't show me affection, he constantly rubs my calf or lays his head against my knees as I sit on the couch so focused on these dumb reality TV shows to notice. No wonder he is always so exhausted by the end of the day. Last weekend, I decided to stay home rather than go out, and I saw them play with their homemade snakes and ladders game on Saturday night. On Sunday afternoon after breakfast, they brought out a huge box of junk, which they then used to make their own command center for their spaceship and roleplayed for the next two hours. I never knew they made these things. I felt so left out and awkward because I wanted to get involved like Kay, but just didn't see any place for myself. I don't think they'll ever be as engaged with me as they are with him. I can only wonder how he's coping with all of this on his own silently. I bet he's enjoying himself, but it seems so taxing.
I feel so jealous of him and angry with myself. I've been blaming him this entire time while he has been the primary caretaker for the kids while I live an almost child-free lifestyle. How do I get better at this? They seem so content with themselves, I've been wondering do they even need me? I feel like if I don't do something now, I'll lose my family. How much more can he sacrifice? I've already lost years with all three of them. In the comments, quote, I honestly contemplated leaving him or just starting an affair multiple times. This tells me you have serious issues beyond your responsibilities. Marriage is really tough. Is this where your mind goes when there is trouble? And after reading that, it makes me think more couples need to take a step back and evaluate what the other person does for the relationship. I feel like a lot of divorces and affairs could be prevented if couples communicated more and realized how much effort the other partner puts in. Honestly, the important thing is that you notice now. I would honestly show him this. The way you wrote it is so beautiful, I'm struggling not to cry. I think it would make him open up and talk to you, share things with you, and he would be so happy to see you want to get involved that he will open up this new world with the kids and make room for you. From there, everything else will fit into place. I really hope that you'll update us, and I wish you the best of luck. And now, on to the update. So I honestly was very, very scared on how to even begin, but the day after I posted, I saw an opening with my kids and I jumped on it. So I was working in my office, and during my lunch break, I walked in on them making paper airplanes by watching a video online, and I decided to join in. As I was helping them make the planes, I could just sense this aura of confusion from them since I only ever talked about school, and when I first approached them, they had this guilty expression, and I guess just imagined that I was there to scold them for making noise or wasting time or something. This broke my heart that my kids saw me in such a negative light. I always thought that I would be the fun parent who hangs out with kids and stuff, but I can clearly see that I am nowhere near that image that I had. I don't even think that I can call myself a parent, honestly. At least not yet. So we spent the afternoon making and racing paper planes, and this gave me the idea of doing origami with them. I used to love origami in college, so I ordered a stack of origami paper when I returned to work. The rest of the day was still the same with me working, my husband coming home and playing games, making dinner, and I went on my run. After dinner, I was still unsure about how to approach my husband, and we just continued our routine. At bedtime, I told my husband to relax, and that I'll take them to bed and tuck them in. My daughter was surprisingly very happy with this, but my son insisted that only his father can tuck him in, so we took one kid each. This did hurt my feelings, but I guess I shouldn't expect them to take me back, seeing as I have been absent emotionally for so long. While tucking her in, she did tell me how much fun it was making paper airplanes and quietly asked if we could do it again tomorrow. I quite enthusiastically said yes and stayed there until she fell asleep. When I came out, my husband was already in our bed on his phone. He looked exhausted. We didn't talk much and I just got changed and climbed in. Usually I'm finishing my shows, but I came in early. I was expecting a reaction from him, but he didn't say anything. I was about to bring up everything from my last post, but I chickened out and just went to sleep instead. I don't even know how to begin talking to him about it. I thought of showing him my last post, but I don't think I can. I mentioned how I contemplated starting an affair since I felt my needs weren't being met, and I can't let my cane know how close I was to destroying everything. He was cheated on before by an ex, and it broke him for a good year and a half. I don't want him to think there's something to worry about, because there isn't. At the same time, it's just impossible to talk to him since I just can't face him or look him in the eyes and tell him how I've been blaming him for my own failures for so long and letting resentment build against him. How does one even go about it? So this is what's been happening every day for the past five days. I've been doing origami with the kids during lunch and tucking my daughter in at night, although I attempt to do it for both my kids every time. I've also been waking up early for breakfast and have been cutting down on my running time so that I can just sit at the table with the kids while they do their homework. I tried helping my husband with cooking, but he just pushes me out since he has his own system and doesn't want it disturbed. 
I also have been returning his affections post-dinner when they play Minecraft while I watch TV. While he rubs my calf every now and then and lays his head against my knee, I play lightly with his hair. I know he likes to be patted, and I used to do it all the time when we were dating. He was a little startled at first, but now he just smiles when I do it. Our nights haven't changed as we both just sit in our bed on our phones and him just looking exhausted. I know I can't make any meaningful change until I talk to him, but it's just so hard. I just don't know what to do. I mean, I know what to do, but just can't do it because it seems so scary. How do people do this? So that's what's happened so far. I plan on talking this out with my in-laws since they have treated me like their own daughter since day one and hopefully can help me talk to my husband about this. It used to be so easy to talk to Kay about anything and he would have the best response to everything. How did I become this person who can't even talk to the most understanding and sweetest man that I have ever known? I wish he could just read my mind, give me his melting smile, and just hold me and tell me everything is going to be fine and just never let go. In the comments, to be honest, I would advise you to talk to your husband first before you talk with others about it. I don't know your husband, but he could get the wrong impression if you talk to others first before you talk to him. An approach that might be easier for you could be to write everything from your last post, leave the affair idea out, into a letter, and give it to him when you have a moment on your own. Maybe ask your in-laws if they could take the kids for an hour or two so that you have some time, and then give him the letter and let him react to it. Good luck and stay strong. It's worth it. You're doing a good job, keep it up. And when it gets tough, or when you've had a difficult day, just remember that these sorts of moments are the kind of thing which will make that day a bit better. My parents were distant to me as a kid, and it affected me loads. They will appreciate you and love you much more than if you weren't doing this. Well done. And now, on to the final update. So it's been a while since I last posted, and a lot has happened, and something that happened recently that reminded me of this account. Let's start at the beginning. I recently realized that I was, and am, a terrible partner and wife who has been checked out for at least the last four years. I came here for help and have been trying to improve. The week after my original post, I made some effort to get involved with the kids and had been getting along with my son, but my daughter was still hesitant and my husband was oblivious to my revelations and efforts. I was too scared to talk to him about these things, and no matter how much I prepared myself, I always chickened out. More on this later. So after I made my update post, my husband came to me late the next day after work looking miserable. Apparently he had been given so much work that he couldn't spend any time with us for the foreseeable future and said that he wanted my help with the kids. Honestly, it felt like he wasn't asking his partner for help, but begging a stranger for any kind of assistance. That hurt so bad. I, of course, seeing this as another opportunity to be the partner and mother they deserve, jumped on it. I made sure to tell him that he doesn't need to ask me like that, and that they were my kids as well, and that he is my husband and I'll do whatever I can to help and support him out. After I said that, the expression of pure relief and delight will forever be imprinted on my memory. How bad must I have been for him to find such joy in me just doing my bare minimum duty? So for the next few weeks, I became the primary caretaker of the kids. He would still help with the homework, while I couldn't help at all. I tried taking it over for a few days, but it took three times as long for us to finish it since I had to look things up for my daughter and we ended up staying past the kids' bedtime. So instead, I decided on making dinner, but my husband interwined and ordered takeout. Apparently, the reason my husband has cooked our entire relationship is because I am a terrible one and he didn't want me to know. Sad face. What does he even see in me? I can't cook, can't help out with homework, can't be an involved mother or partner. At this point, I felt so defeated that I'm sure I physically expressed it because he just gave me a back hug and smiled and said that he loved me. I didn't let this stop me, and I decided that if I couldn't help out in these ways, there are other things I can do. I decided to make sure that I know everything about my kids and help them or even entertain them any way I can. So every day after work, instead of going on the run, I took my daughter on walks while my son rode his bicycle around the block. Since the days are longer now, I thought this would be a fun activity. 
During this time, I now know that 1. My girl wants to be a scientist like her dad. 2. She likes the ice cream shop in a mall nearby, which only has a few flavors, but they taste amazing. 3. She wants to learn Korean. My husband has been helping her with some basic Korean for months, and now, since he learnt it to impress my family and I didn't know this, this was yet another failure on my part. So she can talk with my parents in their native language. 4. She loves K-pop, and her favourite group is Mama Moo. Looks like she has my taste in music. And 5. She wants to learn how to do her hair. So since then, I've been talking to her in Korean, since it's my native language, during our walks, and have been helping her with the workbooks that my husband got. Surprisingly, she's been picking it up really fast, and has inspired my son to learn it as well. Every night I've been tucking both of them in, and when I go to bed, my husband is just waiting for me to learn about my day, and after so long, we have finally been getting intimate, and it's been amazing. The weekend pretend games they used to play with their father still happen, but he has asked me to sub in a few times so he can work. Well, I have to say my kids are incredible in making up scenarios, and then just improvising as it goes. Clearly they learnt it from my husband. Despite all his good qualities, I know for a fact he is an incredible tail spinner and can lie through his teeth, and you would never find out or even suspect him. It honestly used to terrify me when I first saw him do it, but he has been nothing but honest with me our entire relationship since he doesn't like it when he lies. So during these games, I still feel like the odd one out, but my kids don't pick up on that. Sure, I'm not as great as their father, but I think at this point I can hold my own. I have tried doing their improvising thing or coming up with scenarios, and although they love it, I can tell I say some of the most cringy, cheesy lines and ideas you have ever heard, and I can audibly hear my husband hold back his laughter when he hears them. This brings us to yesterday morning. My daughter wanted to play Mario Kart with my husband, but he said that he was a bit busy, but he could watch, and asked her to ask me. I've never played this game, but I said yes. Suddenly, I could see it in my husband's eyes, the gears in his head started turning. He said that we should play after lunch. Post-lunch, he came out with this cardboard box with slits in it and empty soda cans attached to the back. So here's the rules. We're supposed to drive the car like an actual car. If we move forward, then we have to press the accelerator. If we drift, we have to press the brakes. We used the switch steering wheel thing to play. My son was to see our feet and the game to make sure the rules are followed. If you fail, then you get a 3 second penalty each time. It was so much fun that we played for hours, but let me tell you, this was the hardest thing ever, and I could honestly say that we both hated him and my son for making us play like this. It was so hard, but it was worth it because afterwards my daughter asked if we could play like this every weekend. And let me tell you, that made me feel like I had just accomplished something amazing. Despite it, I could just feel the hesitance and desperation behind the request. She still had her guard up. I don't really blame her though. I've been a crappy mom. After we put the kids to sleep, my husband confessed something to me. After I wrote my last update, I forgot to log out, and my husband, who is an avid Redditor, found the account and read through everything. These past weeks, he has been testing to see if I would actually do something with these epiphanies I've had, or am I just going to revert back or quit halfway? He never had the additional work. He has just been playing games on his laptop while monitoring my actions to see if I really meant everything that I said in my previous posts. He said he is willing to work towards fixing things and that he loves me, but he doesn't completely trust me either. He said he's been alone in this relationship for quite a while, and these weeks of having an actual active partner has been more liberating than he thought they would. He made it clear that although he was content with the way things used to be up to point, he was considering separating since everything just felt like a burden. He was putting on an act every time he entered the house, always smiling, laughing, and entertaining everyone and their needs. He wants to get counselling to fix this because he's made it clear, if he ever feels like things go back to the way they used to be, he's going to leave because, after experiencing everything these past few weeks, he refuses to go back to it. So I guess I barely made it in time. This is literally my last opportunity to fix my relationships. 
I'm glad that I got my head out of my butt in time, because I may have lost this amazing man forever. I know for a fact that if he asked for a divorce a few months ago, I would have laughed to his face and run there myself and made a huge spectacle about it because I was so far up my ass, I would have entered it twice. Thank you everyone for listening to me and advising me. I even welcome the hate because I deserve so much worse than that. I hope I can fix this because if he leaves me, there would be no one but myself to blame for this. In the comments... It makes you wonder how many other people are out there who see their partner as lazy because they lack the ability to consider that their partner is doing stuff when they're not actively observing them. To me, this was a real wake up on how one-sided a lot of Reddit posts are or can be. Can you imagine if she had posted on relationship advice or something before her epiphany? Husband barely does anything. Only chores he does is cook dinner. All he does is game. No interest in sex, even though he helps with homework, he's still playing games while he does it, so not really focused on them. She would have been advised to leave. COVID to the rescue? I really wonder what the statistics are on how quarantine affected relationships. My dad divorced my mum. After working from home and no longer traveling up and down the country, he got to see how badly she was treating us. He was used to getting treated horribly, but hadn't realized it was happening to us kids too, which gave him the resolve to make this decision that he had wrestled with for years. When I got the option, I chose to go with him. Already, life has changed so much, I don't recognize myself. I actually have a personality beyond the obedient daughter. I have likes and dislikes that I didn't know about. I never could have imagined that I'd have this much freedom and a life without fear. In just a few months, I've become someone unrecognizable from how I used to be. If COVID hadn't happened, I'd be stuck how I was before, unable to see a way out other than the end of my own life. COVID to the rescue indeed. I'm really impressed that she not only figured out there was a problem on her own, but instead of expecting her spouse to tell her what to do, started trying on her own to get more involved. That said, this cements it for me that I'm not cut out to be a parent. I just can't imagine having to do all of this. Kudos to those of you who raised kids and give them the care and attention they deserve. Being a parent taught me that I am bad with kids. Correction, I'm great with kids for like 45 minutes a day. After that, I'm just praying for quiet or my own death, whichever comes first. I kid, I kid, kind of. Am I the a-hole for not wanting officially adopting my daughter? So this is long and messy. In high school, I had two best friends. Mark would be 32 and May 32 female. I, 30 male, got kicked out of the house when I turned 16. Mark's family took me in and became like my adopted parents. I'm two years younger. Mark and May started dating when they were juniors in high school. After they graduated, Mark joined the military. During his first leave, May became pregnant. Shortly after his return to service, Mark passed away. We were devastated. She at the time was staying with Mark's parents, and I was still living there. I took her to all of her appointments. I helped her through her pregnancy, and they put Mark's name on the birth certificate. By this time, I had graduated early and was looking to go to local college. I became busy with school but helped any time that I could. Three years later, I graduated and got a good job and my own place. May moved in with me with her now three-year-old daughter Alice. Alice started calling me Dada. We tried to persuade her not to do that, but we failed. A year of us living together, I started having real feelings for May. I talked to Mark's parents and they gave me the green light. Nothing happened between us up to this point. Two years later, we married. One year after that, she gave birth to our daughter Jenny. Yesterday was Alice's 12th birthday. It was just me, May, Alice, Jenny, and Mark's parents. We have told her about Mark throughout the years, and she knows that he is really her dad. When Alice finished up opening her presents, she pulled the last one out and handed it to me. I opened it, and it was adoption papers. At some point, Alice told May that she wanted to be officially my daughter. I explained that she is my daughter and I love her with all my heart. I tried to explain that Mark is her birth father and that she is both his and my daughter. 
With that, I gently explained that I don't think that it was a good idea and I would have to think about it. She got upset and ran to her room. Mark's parents ended up leaving. May and I got into a fight. I said I don't want to erase Mark from our history. After some back and forth, she called me an a-hole and walked to Alice's room. She wouldn't let me in to talk and locked me out of the room. This morning, she would not talk to me and Alice was still crying. I don't know what to do. Please help. Also, I know what will be said. Divorce is not an option. I plan on going over to Mark's parents later tonight. Edit. I have not talked to Mark's parents yet. I will later tonight. Also, we have never discussed this situation in the past. I thought that we were in a place of understanding that I am her dad, but Mark is and was her father. Her birthday was on Tuesday. In the comments, you're the a-hole. You got so caught up in honoring someone who is gone that you forgot to honor the person right in front of you. This is certainly true. However, I will go with everyone sucks here, except for Alice, obviously. There is absolutely no way a 12-year-old got her hands on adoption papers on her own. Whichever adults thought ambushing, sorry, surprising, OP with adoption papers in front of the kids with no prior discussion whatsoever was a good idea are a-holes too. Presumably May discussed and decided on adoption with her 12-year-old without her husband's involvement, which is unacceptable. You're the a-hole. You didn't want to erase Mark, but you effectively erased yourself as Alice's dad. The only dad she has ever known. And for God's sake, if adopting her is called erasing, you shouldn't have married May. That's even worse. Making the decision to adopt someone should not be a decision made in a few moments while the child is present. Surprising someone with adoption papers in front of the child is horrendous. Why would you subject your child to that? This should have been talked about beforehand. What the hell is wrong with people? Yeah, that's where I'm leaning. This isn't just anyone either. This is his older brother, in a sense. Give OP a heads up. My god, this is traumatizing. She's been calling him dad all this time. I don't understand how he didn't at least think of this before now. And he didn't have to accept right away, but telling her that it's a bad idea isn't good either. No a-holes here. May should have spoken to you about this. My assumption is May and Alice want a legal guardian if something happens. You are her dad, but I also understand your position. What about a legal guardian, which gives you all the rights without erasing her father? Explain that you loved her father too and don't want to erase him. Start talking. Talk and talk and talk until that little girl feels loved and like you are her dad. Because effectively, you are her dad. And now on to the update. Thanks for the support. To clear up parts of the story, I should have handled the situation differently. I never said no to her. When Mark went on leave for the first time, he was home for two weeks before he got shipped out. In those two weeks, Alice was conceived. Mark is 100% Alice's bio dad. Disregarding Alice's feelings was the last thing that I wanted to do. May, Alice, and Jenny are my world. I don't treat my daughters any different. My feelings for May changed when I saw the way she would interact with Alice after they moved in. It filled my heart with more emotion and love that I had not felt ever before that point. The party was just close family, which is only us four and Mark slash my parents. Since it was a weeknight, they left so that we could work things out. Mark is the only reason that I made it past my teen years. I was in a deep and dark spiral. He saved me. So when people say he's dead, get over it, I can't. He never gave up on me and I refused to give him up. I went to Mark's parents and had a nice talk with them. They said Mark would be happy and proud of who I am and how well I've taken care of the people he loved. They don't feel like I'm replacing their son in any way, but I am a son to them. I called my wife and she agreed to talk. I admitted how I felt that we should have had this talk before the party and that this could have been avoided. At that, she did apologize. I then explained more about why I said what I did, personal feelings and emotions. She said that she thought that I would be happy and sign. I explained my point of view and she understood my concerns and hesitation. We were finishing the conversation when Jenny ran out of her room and asked if we were okay. I said yes and that I loved her very much. I then went to talk to Alice alone. 
I went to her room and my heart broke again. She was still crying on her bed. I knocked and asked if we could talk. She squeaked out a yes, and I sat on the edge of her bed while she had her back to me. I told her that I love her and I will always be her dad. I apologized, saying that I never meant to hurt her. Sometimes adults make mistakes and are not clear with their words or emotions. I made a mistake and hope one day I can make it up to her. I explained Mark was a very important person in my life and I am grateful that he was able to help bring a beautiful and special daughter into my life. I will always love her and that I have the best daughter in the world. Not the full conversation, obviously. She turned around and hugged me really tight. It was one of the best hugs of my life. I told her that it would be my honor to adopt her if she still wants that. Between sobs, she said she did. We stayed like that until she fell asleep. After that, May and I did a very overdue heart-to-heart and deep talk. It's not all sunshine and rainbows, and we still have a lot of healing to do. I have not signed yet. I will. We as a family are looking through all of the legal options, and we are on the books for therapy. In the comments, if you do adopt her, will she still be able to get Mark's benefits as he passed away while on active duty? Ooh. That's a good point to consider. OP, it's worth looking into and then can always explain you will adopt afterwards. Also, be absolutely certain that they won't already consider this a de facto adoption, common law or some such, and she isn't already out of anything because her mother married OP and he has very patently taken the role of father. I read your other post after seeing this one, and personally, I would have voted no a-holes here while acknowledging it was deeply hurtful for unintentional reasons, but definitely no a-holes here today. In Judaism, we have a law. When a man dies with no children, his brother is obligated to offer his brother's widow the chance to have a child in her brother's name. If they don't wish to do this, the widow condemns him for abandoning his brother's name, spits at him, and takes off his shoe. Obviously in modern times it's a formality, but the meaning still stands. You aren't dishonoring or replacing him by adopting her, just the opposite. You took your brother's family into your home as if they were your own, grew to love them honestly as your own, and have done right by them to such a degree that his daughter has chosen you, despite knowing about her biological father her entire life. Because of you, she grew up in a loving and stable home. Because of you, she will always know what a healthy family looks like. Because of you, she even knows that sometimes you can hurt someone by accident, not because you don't love them, but precisely because you do love them so much and thought that you were doing the right thing. And most importantly, because of you, she learned how to make it right when you have a fight and hurt the people that you love. We have a saying, whoever saves one life, it is as if he had saved the entire world. You saved one little girl. You loved her so much, she chose you as the only father she has ever truly known. And because of you, your friend will live on for generations. Our next post is titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my adopted brother he is overreacting? I, 18 female, have four siblings. Ro is 19 male. Ro was adopted when he was 13. His biological parents decided they didn't want a baby. The rest of us are biologically siblings. All five of us go and went to an art school. The older boys for music, me for art, and Ro is going for dance. I found out through some friends that Ro has been saying our parents have always treated him differently. This week Ro has a show, but my art show is the same day. A couple days ago, our parents said they'd try to make it to his, but they're not totally sure if they could. He hung up on them and according to one of our friends, locked himself in his dorm and wouldn't talk to anyone. His roommate called me and said he's still really upset and was hoping that I could talk to him. I said he was just being sensitive and I hung up to call him. I let him vent for a while. According to him, mum and dad have always put everyone else first. He also said they were disappointed when he went for dance. They were, but they got over it. I said he was overreacting and just needed to chill out. He hung up on me and then blocked my number. Now I'm getting texts and calls from his roommate Sam and all our mutual friends saying I'm a butthole, I'm a cow, I'm selfish, and I need to apologize. 
Mum, Dad, Tom, and Cam are on my side. So, am I the a hole? In the comments, you're the a hole. You acknowledge that his claim is legit, they got over it, does not mean they treat him differently, and then blow him off. Yeah, you're the a hole. And your parents too. Divide and conquer. Why can't one come to your show and the other go to his? Them prioritizing your show is evidence to him that they haven't gotten over him doing dance. It's evidence to him that they don't really care. It's their job to show him they do. OP says, you're right. Thank you for being honest. Now I see they haven't gotten over it, but pretended in front of us are the kids. It kind of makes me wonder if they've said anything to him in private, or just more silently disapproved. You're the a-hole, and so are your parents. A dance show is an actual one-time performance. They can look at your art pieces anytime. They should have prioritized his show, and how is dance more disappointing than art or music? All are equally useless degrees. Not that I believe they are useless, but they're on the same level of potential employability. OP says, I think it's because he's a boy and it's ballet. We were raised in an incredibly religious home. You're right though, he deserves some of the spotlight too. Oh yeah, that would explain it. I do ballet too, and my mother never misses a performance unless I specifically tell her not to come. Rule of thumb, anytime you attempted to think XYZ is overreacting, you are the a-hole. Many adopted children feel like second-class citizens in their own families. This is undoubtedly Rose's feelings. It's clearly not the first time where his special life events are completely ignored by his family in favor of another child's. If your parents really cared, one would go to his show. And OP says, Wow, I didn't know that. He's never been open about his past. Could that be why he was so excited to get a dorm on campus and move out? Why would he be open? He clearly couldn't be open to y'all's parents, and I sincerely doubt this is the first time his siblings have told him to get over it because they couldn't or didn't want to see the unfairness. And now on to the update. Thank you everyone for your input. I decided against going to my art show, called all of our family and friends, and had them show up to his instead. We got it sold out. We all met up with him for lunch beforehand and gave him his little gifts. He said he appreciates it, but it'll take a while to trust us again, which is very valid considering how we've been treating him. He also introduced us to his boyfriend. They're adorable together. Mom and Dad thanked him for being someone Ro could turn to when he needed someone. They did great. They even got a standing ovation at the end. Ro did injure his ankles slightly in the beginning of Act 1 during his first solo, but he played it off amazingly. I'm proud of him, and it was amazing to formally meet his boyfriend. Mom and Dad sat him down in front of all of us, and apologized for how they treated him, and promised they would do better. After the show, he came up and hugged me while crying to thank me. I told him it was all you guys. Thank you guys again. In the comments, I love these kinds of updates. And the original You're the A-Hole just got turned into a Not the A-Hole. Amazing, sis. Thank you for the update. I don't know about anyone else, but it makes my heart so happy when people are able to accept their A-Hole part in this situation and try to rectify it. I'm not crying. You're crying. Good job, OP. Ah, you got me ugly crying now. You took all the comments, tough as some of those were to hear, and you took them on board. You reflected on them and your family dynamic and then turned into a literal superhero. You took a crappy situation and you turned it around beautifully. You should be so proud of yourself. Hell, I don't even know you and I'm proud of you. You're an awesome sister and I think you can look forward to a wonderful relationship with your brother going forward. And you have paved the way for your whole family to heal and have wonderful relationships going forward. Thanks so much for the update. You warmed my heart and made me happy. OP says, Thank you so much. I love him and I don't want to lose him. These comments really opened my eyes. He's a little standoffish, understandably, but I hope he realizes this isn't going to be a temporary thing. We've been talking a lot since the show, and it's going so well. I'm really proud of Ro and Ash both. Ash, Ro's boyfriend, was one of Ash's supporting characters. Not sure if I worded that correctly, but... 
His role was one of the prince's companions. They both did so well. I really appreciated everyone's advice. We are all taking the boys out for dinner tomorrow, along with Ash's parents and hanging out. It'll be our first time meeting them, knowing Ash and Rowan are in a relationship. I am a little worried about how our parents will react, just because this has been a long-term relationship and Ash's parents have known first. But my other brothers and I all agree their relationship with Rowan doesn't have to define our relationship with him, and he is our brother no matter what. Am I the a-hole for telling my wife that it's for the best if her son just stays away from our family? I, 40, married my wife Jenna, 42, 8 years ago, and we've been together for 10 years. We have two great kids together. When she was 19, Jenna had a son Randy, 23, whose dad was a deadbeat. Jenna didn't make much, so Randy didn't have the best childhood. But she tried so hard for him, but he was so resentful, and he didn't care. He hated me when we started dating, was passive-aggressive, refused to take a role at our wedding, and when we had our daughter, Alexis, who is now seven, he got spiteful. We tried all kinds of therapy, but he refused to accept that there wasn't a problem. When he turned 19, he cursed out his mom after an argument, and enough was enough. We evicted him and ended financial support so he would understand how much his mom tried. By all accounts, he's doing well. He graduated, got a degree, and has a high-paying software job. We stayed in contact with him. We text him, but he barely responds. He only sees Jenna for about an hour every few months. She's always sad after seeing him, and I have to cheer her up, which isn't an issue, but I don't like seeing her sad. We had a big family dinner a week ago, and she invited him weeks in advance to give him time. He never came. She found out from Instagram two days ago that Randy blew off the dinner because he took his girlfriend to visit his father's family in Australia and proposed because it turns out she's pregnant. She's been very sad this entire week because of it, and I tried everything to cheer her up, but it's not working. She doesn't even seem to be happy around Alexis or even our baby, and I'm worried because she has never been this depressed before. I tried to talk to her about it, and she was just non-responsive, and nothing I was doing made her happy. So I pointed out to her that Randy clearly doesn't care for our family, and it's for the best if he just stays away. She got very angry with me and called me a butthole for not trying to understand how she felt and just trying to make her feel better. I want to be clear, everything about Randy is just in there to give clarification regarding why what I said may be the issue between my wife and I. This is not about Randy except for how he relates to the conflict between my wife and I. That said, I don't see what I did wrong in saying that, given how hurt she was, but she is still angry at me, and maybe she's right, and I am the butthole for saying that, so I guess I'm here to learn that. Edit. My username is not in reference to Randy. My wife refers to our baby as her spawn. It's a weird term of endearment. I originally made this account to post about our baby, but I made this post because it was a fresh account. I probably will not be doing that now. In the comments, you're the a-hole, and I'll give you a few reasons why. The reason Randy was spiteful was because he was probably bullied for having no father and him not being able to have nice clothes or toys. Kids are wicked. When his half-sister was born, he felt replaced because he sees your kids as the kids who get to live with both biological parents 24-7 and they aren't going through what he went through. He feels like your kids are his mom's do-over babies. Four legs on a table, four wheels on a car, he's constantly felt like the fifth. He felt that whenever he sees you being a father to your kids, what's going through his mind is... I'm the constant reminder to my stepfather that my mum spread her legs for someone else and it sucks that my half-siblings get the good life and I didn't. When you kicked him, that was the final nail in the coffin because now he feels like his mum abandoned and replaced him. This is the best comment. The kid's been through some crap and OP has been entirely unwilling to consider the situation from his perspective. He goes on and on about how the kid doesn't care, when it's blatantly obvious the kid does care, but is hurt. The real person who doesn't seem to care is OP. You're the a-hole. Our family? 
I can't be civil and say what I'm thinking, but Randy is her family, and he should also be your family. It is painfully clear why he would feel like an outcast here. Randy had a crappy childhood, then got a crappy stepfather, who assumes Randy is 100% the problem. Randy is then kicked out at 19, no financial support, just see ya. Why do you and Jenna feel that Randy owes you anything? What effort did either of you make? You dumped the guy. I'm amazed he talks to either of you at all. And now on to the update. I considered posting this on Am I the A-hole, but I'd rather go low key for the few people who have messaged me since I first posted. When Randy came back from Australia, Jenna learned by an Instagram post, my wife called and begged him to come over when he could, and he came about two weeks after. He was clearly uncomfortable when Alexis came to say hi with our baby, so I took them to my cousins before returning. When I came back, it was clear Randy had been crying given that he was drinking like a pitcher of water. After that, he gave Jenna an old photo that he had in his wallet of her and him when he was like five, of her holding him in the bed while he slept, and said he didn't need it anymore, gave her a hug and left the house. I talked to him outside his car before he left, and I apologized for being a tyrant and a lot of the things people on my last post said that I did. He just told me that he appreciates the apology, and if I ever did care about him, to keep myself and my kids out of his life. It hurt to hear him say that he doesn't care for them and doesn't see them as his siblings and doesn't ever want to see them again. I told him that I'd respect his wishes and would try to make sure his mum did too. He shook my hand and left. After he left, Jenna told me that when I was gone, he asked what we wanted and assumed that she was calling asking him for money and didn't know that it was about him getting married and his fiancé's pregnancy. He started crying because she apologized for how everything went down between them and for evicting him and admitted that it was wrong of us. When Jenna asked if he hates her, he told her that cause she's his mum, he'll always love her, and if she wants, he will keep seeing her as little as he does until he moves to Australia, and she will be invited to his wedding but only as a guest, and that she would never meet his child or be grandma since that was a role that was going to his dad's wife, and he felt uncomfortable with how small the age gap between our baby and his will be. He told her that if she really loved him as much as she said, she would be happy with that, and happy for him. After that day, it was hard for Jenna, and she did take it out on our kids, and especially on me. But she did get better, and things got back into routine, and we became that happy family we were again. Randy's wedding was about five months ago, before his wife started showing, and my wife went. I, of course, was not invited. She came back crying because she was pretty much isolated there, didn't talk to anybody except Randy and some of her former in-laws. She hated how much he honored his father's family during his reception speech, to the point where he even called his stepmom his true mom and his dad's kids for being the brother and sister that he always wanted. But I guess it's how he really feels. A little bit ago, Randy and his wife had their baby, and he is a beautiful boy. He's actually the most chubby, role-filled baby I've ever seen. The post they put on Instagram really hurt Jenna since it was praising his wife and all about how he knows that she would be the greatest mother in the world and how he would never let what happened to him happen to their son. And she hasn't seen him in person. She cried more than she ever has when she saw that post. I've honestly never seen her that distraught and I couldn't leave her side because I really was afraid that she would off herself or something. I know she wants nothing more than to be there for Randy and help with his baby, but since then, it's kind of been like our kids, especially our baby, doesn't even exist. Now, Randy kept his promise to keep seeing my wife, and he met her out for coffee about once or twice a month. She would always be glowing after their meetings, and would tell me all about his life and how happy he was. I'm guessing she thought that they would lead to something more. He and his family will be moving to Australia next month, and I'm posting this now because Jenna met with him yesterday and he made it clear that it would be the last time he was meeting her unless he came back. He did accept a present from her for the baby, so maybe that's something. I know now that I was in the wrong. It may not be a happy ending for me, but it is for Randy 
And since people rightfully cared more about him, that's why I'm posting. Going off of his LinkedIn, he got promoted to the job of software architect at his company, which is big. Think Microsoft level big, which means his fiance and his child will be secure. I'm assuming his job is remote too, so he can work while in Australia. And I want everyone to know, I do genuinely wish him the best. He might not be our family, and that is my fault, but he has his own now, and I'm certain he'll do a better job than I did. Our next post is titled, My wife was killed in a tragic accident, and then I found out she was cheating. Two months ago, my wife of 10 years, I'm 35 and she was 34, tragically passed away in a car accident, hit by a drunk driver in broad daylight. I cried non-stop for three days. We were planning on having kids, and I had started a good paying job a year earlier, and we just purchased our first home just two months before her death. I just couldn't, and still can't believe she is really gone from my life. It's like just yesterday everything was heading in the right direction, and we would soon raise a family. She seemed happy in our marriage and stated how proud of me she was, and the following week after the accident, I received her phone, which was locked. After a week, I found out how to unlock it by an obvious code that I didn't think of earlier. I simply just wanted it to keep photos in her memory, photos of us and so forth. But I saw some odd things in her photos, including photos of her in someone else's house, a house which I had never seen before, taking provocative images. I continued scrolling down and saw the most heart-wrenching thing that I had ever seen, which was her with another man. It was nothing sexual, but they were in a place that was obviously his, and just how close they were, I just knew that this was an affair. The guy who my wife had an affair with showed up at her funeral. I felt like I got stabbed in the gut when I realized I saw him there. I began reading her texts, and first I found out that she was on her way back from his place. Three hours before the accident, she texted him saying, I'm on my way. I knew that meant that he was the last one to see my wife. Not only see her, but having an intimate moment with her. Also, she would still be here right now if she wasn't seeing him. I feel like I'm going through a death of a loved one and a breakup at the same time. She did this behind my back and will never know that I found out. In a way, I feel that she got to escape the heartbreak that she put me through. Although I fully understand death is much worse, and even knowing everything I know, I would never ever wish this or any pain upon her. I found out not only through her texts, but her Facebook messages. Something that absolutely enrages me is that she told her closest friend that this guy from work wanted to take her out to dinner. Her friend encouraged her to go out with him. It enrages me, because I knew her as well, and in person, she was always very nice. But my wife was asking her to get confirmation. Had she said, no, you are married, do not go out with him, I honestly feel like she wouldn't have done it. But her best friend was like, oh, is he hot? Oh, do it! Go have fun! It's just effing enraging. This happened six months ago when she asked her friend about it. A few days later, she talked to her friend about how after dinner, she went to his place and had sex multiple times. When I read that, I honestly got physically sick. I honestly started going through a breakdown, vomiting in the toilet, and then crying on the bathroom floor. I just can't imagine that this stuff actually happened, but it did. How could she do this? But as the days passed and the initial shock began to slow down, I started piecing things together. At the funeral, I noticed something a little unusual, which was this best friend of hers, talking to one of her co-workers. This was a friend from high school, and there was no reason she should have known any of her co-workers, but she was in fact talking to her co-worker, who she had the affair with. Then she came and talked to me, and gave me a hug. The guy who my wife was having an affair with came and shook my hand. Something about that just makes me feel sick, like I was being humiliated in a moment of grief. There was him and her best friend who knew about her affair. I couldn't help but wonder, did her co-workers also know? It's been a month and I feel no closer to breaking away from the heartbreak. I miss her. I want her to be alive. If she was, I would probably even want to fix our marriage. But she's not here anymore. 
I still couldn't bring myself to read all of her text messages with him. There is hundreds, and some are sexually explicit. My blood boils, and my heart aches when I open their texts, and I get hit with anxiety and an adrenaline rush. My palms get sweaty, and my hands shake. But I feel it's important that I know everything. It just breaks my heart that this guy did things with my wife that she wouldn't do for me. The thing that blows my mind the most is that there were no warning signs at all. Not effing one. Our marriage was good, she never did anything suspicious, our sex life went on as normal. Just zero warning signs about it other than the fact that she started wearing a little more makeup than usual. Then I blame myself for not catching on. Maybe this all could have been prevented. Maybe I should have done this or that. I am broken and I don't see myself ever being happy again. In the comments, my god, I am so incredibly sorry for you that I have no words. I can't even begin to imagine what you're going through. That's a lot of conflicting emotion. I know that this is the standard Reddit response, but I very highly recommend seeking out therapy. You need support in this. I'm sorry for your loss. Thanks. I've already done so, and I'm going to be speaking with a psychologist. Good. Just remember you are stronger than you think. I lost a boyfriend to suicide and found out at his funeral that he had cheated. I went through waves of sadness and anger, sometimes at the same time, and sometimes independently. It cut me in a way that was indescribable. You aren't alone. I had a similar experience. When someone dies suddenly, and then evidence starts coming out, it is very upsetting and tragic, especially if you trusted that person fully and have no way to confront them about it. Heartbreaking. Hugs to you and the OP. Is her affair partner married? When are you going to tell the friend that you found out and that you know she encouraged her to do it? OP says, No, he isn't married. It appears that he was and still is single. I already told her. She first told me that she was very sorry to hear that she did that, but that I shouldn't tarnish her reputation by telling people. I said I am only telling you because I know you encouraged her, and she hasn't replied, but it's only been a day. I'm not sure anyone would know how to respond. It's not tarnishing her reputation if she actually did it. You were just being accurate. Have you set up an appointment with a grief counsellor? I have, yes. I have an appointment in one month from now. Well, that's good. I believe in you. There is nothing I can say to fully make you feel better, but this too will pass, and all of your feelings are valid. The tool that I used that worked best at the beginning was screaming in an open field. It sounds funny, but it is very therapeutic. I don't understand how her best friend and this guy had the guts to come to you during the funeral. Some people have no morals. Even if they thought that you didn't know, what they did is just wrong. I feel like I hit a mental wall of thinking about that. How do these people exist and think it's okay to do that? Back up to the post, we have an edit. Thanks everyone for all the support. I honestly didn't expect so much response. Everyone who wished me well, thank you, and know that your kind words give me strength. I've gotten a response back from her friend, stating that she is deeply sorry for encouraging the behavior and not taking my feelings into account. She never wanted me hurt and yada yada. Honestly, I don't feel any relief from her apologies. About the phone. I cannot bring myself to destroy all the truth. I feel like I must read through the entirety of my wife's texts with this man, or I will go forever crazy wondering what did and didn't occur, how often, and maybe get some answers on if they were lovers, or was it just lust and sex, or what did she plan on doing? Obviously in this state of trauma, I cannot emotionally handle reading their conversations, but I decided to keep the phone, to read it all, and then toss it and move on. Also, for the people telling me to piss on her grave or saying this is karma, please drop it and don't comment. I loved her for over a decade, and it's not going away like that. I still love this woman even with the disgusting things she has done. She was still my wife, a daughter, and an aunt. She didn't deserve to get hit by some drunk driver and suffer with bleeding in her brain that ultimately caused her death. Please go away. I do not need this, and I am not a sick-minded enough man to have those thoughts. For everyone else, thank you so much.
And now, on to the update. Hello all. I love everyone in this sub. You guys have shown me so much support regarding what I've been dealing with. I can't say anything has gotten better, especially during this epidemic where I'm stuck not working now. Just too much time. Anyway, people mentioned getting in touch with my wife's company's HR about her co-worker whom she was having an affair with. He is single. I have done this, and I asked about it, and they said there was no policy against co-workers getting romantically involved as long as it is off work. I kind of figured this was the case. As much as I want to get him fired and ruin his life, it was in fact consensual, and their affair was off the clock, so I understand that there is nothing they can do. I didn't think there was. I sent a screenshot of the message of her friend encouraging her to her boyfriend on Facebook. He replied that he is sorry for what happened to me, but that she didn't think that she would actually do it, that I shouldn't blame his girlfriend for my wife's affair or death, so I guess it's a dead end there, as I'm talking to a doorknob who believes whatever his girlfriend says. I got a ton of suggestions about posting her texts and messages to publicize what she did. I am not going to do this, and I really don't understand the point of doing it. She's gone, and has no consequences left to suffer, no justice will be served. She is gone. I would only be making this more difficult for her family. Besides, it's not really anyone else's business, even if she was alive. So I decided to go through all her texts with him and her other friends. I was going to wait longer before looking, but I just couldn't sleep. I couldn't seem to move on from wondering how, where, why, and not having any answers. Her entire conversation with him was still there from their first and last texts. Little bit of good news is she expressed guilt, although not right away, about the affair, and after meeting him the second time for sex, she expressed guilt, and she told him that she can't continue seeing him. But, of course, it would continue. Their conversations would range from her being very close to him, sending heart-filled messages, to next thing totally ignoring him. But she would sometimes apologize for ignoring him, which obviously angered me. Bad news is she appears to have been much more sexually exploratory with him. She also smoked weed with him, which I never seen her do. I found he had anal sex with her more than once, yet it's something that she never let me do. She also had him sleep in our bed on the night that I went to visit my brother. Also, she gave him head while he drove to get lunch on their lunch break. She talked about it like it was funny. This isn't something that I was ready for. I began shaking and puking. It gave me a severe anxiety attack, and I resorted to drinking last night because it was just too much. I feel like he took her from me. Like he killed her because she would be alive if she didn't go to his place. I've been obsessed with the dates on their messages, which they would meet. I'd go back to my social media and camera album to see what day that was. I was heartbroken when I saw that they met on our anniversary when I took her to dinner to the first place that we went on a date. I remembered that day as a very good night with her, very romantic, and we were both so happy and close. I felt like I got hit in the gut knowing she had sex with another man just hours before our date. It makes me sick and I don't see how I can get over this. My mind is still numb after what I read last night. I just can't believe that crap actually happened. I honestly wish I never discovered this. I'd much rather have left her phone alone. I'd rather have remembered something I never knew. A lie compared to how I feel now. But now that I know, I need to let go of all the love that I have for her. I'm mourning her death, and I miss her so much, but it's time that I need to realize she isn't who I thought she was. I have read everything there is to know, and at least I don't think I can hurt any more than I am hurting now. He is too hopefully healing. I have a talk with a psychologist in about a month, but if I feel any worse, I'll go to the hospital, because I'm close to feeling suicidal. But I know that it's an illogical feeling, I must go on. In the comments, I cannot even begin to imagine how he must have felt after discovering the betrayal. Too heavy a burden to carry. I get his desire to read everything and know everything, but that honestly has just made it so much worse. If you've ever been cheated on, I have, there is a strange temptation to picture them in your head as it drives you insane. It takes restraint and self-awareness to block the thoughts, which then speeds up the healing process and helps you move on. 
As a younger man, I would have done the same as him, but now I believe I would try to avoid the nitty-gritty and accept the bare minimum. I think he was searching for any inkling during their affair that his wife loved him. He sounded relieved that she was a little guilty in all of it, but he definitely is a better person than me. I would have put everyone on blast. The wife, but also the best friend and co-worker. Everyone would have known the type of people they actually were. Her death was a sad situation, but that doesn't exempt anyone from the pain that he's going through right now, and his primary outlet, because he listened to the terrible advice of her best friend, was to keep it quiet. Does she not realize that it's a pathway to harming himself even more than she already has? I effing hate her, and I don't even know her. I hope everyone she trusts is lying to her. She is a tremendous piece of garbage. The friend is infuriating. She didn't think she would do it. Well then, why encourage it? Why keep quiet about it? It's just an excuse, not the truth. Remember how she tried to just persuade him not to tell anyone initially, before she found out that he already knew the friend encouraged this? The friend knew she would do it and does not want to have the guilt from it now. These trollops ruined this man. One is dead and the other gets to move on. My best friend confessed feelings to my girlfriend, she wants to cut him out of our life. Now, I said our life and not mine, because she says she cannot control me, but she never wants to be around him anymore. So if she and I are together, she doesn't want to see him. She also says I should really think how good of a friend he is if he is confessing feelings and saying I love you to his best friend's girlfriend and future wife. I, 28 male, have been dating my girlfriend, 30 female, for two years now, and honestly, it's the best relationship of my life. We've discussed engagement and marriage, and have also met each other's families. My best friend, on the other hand, is someone I've known for almost eight years, and even lived with him for four years. In fact, that's how I met him, as roommates. Until two days ago, I never would have suspected that he saw my girlfriend in any other way than his best friend's girlfriend, and would-be life partner. But yesterday night, my girlfriend came home from the office and said we need to talk, and told me what had transpired. My girlfriend and my best friend's office buildings are in the same tech park, so they occasionally see each other, and that's why when my best friend joined her when she was having tea, it didn't surprise her. But, in fact, what he said had surprised her, though. He told her that he had been harboring a crush on her since I introduced them, and he could no longer keep it to himself, since we were discussing getting engaged. He said he owed it to himself to tell her. My girlfriend told him to F off and walked away. She also blocked him immediately on every platform. And then she told me. I asked my best friend WTF happened, and he admitted but also said he never asked her to cheat on me, he was just confessing his feelings. My girlfriend on the other hand says there is no point in confessing his feelings and he definitely didn't have noble intentions as he claims. She says she doesn't want anything to do with him because he betrayed both of us and disrespected our relationship. I am a little torn here, and of course I'm angry at him, but I also have a lot of history with the guy. Would appreciate some advice. Thank you. In the comments, your girlfriend did exactly what one should do if they're in a committed relationship. And yes, she is right in cutting him out of her life and your joint life. And she is also right that you should seriously consider cutting him from your life as well. Actually, let's put it in another way. If you don't cut him from your life, can you ever really trust him? And on top of that, your girlfriend will probably end up leaving you over it. Man, I wish my ex did that when his best friend confessed his feelings to him. It didn't matter that his best friend was male and that my ex was straight. It still bothered me to no end when my ex put his friend's needs over mine just because they were best friends. It's awkward as hell when I'm on the couch with my head on my ex's shoulder and the best friend sits on the other side of him and does the same. This was a constant thing, and I definitely hated his friend's attitude towards me when all three of us hung out. It hurt a lot because he was my friend too. We might have stayed together if it weren't for his friend. People don't confess to someone unless they are hoping that the person will leave their current partner for them. Sorry, but he crossed the line and is no longer your friend. Your girlfriend is 100% right here. Yup, 
He was willing to torch his friendship with OP just to have a slim possibility of getting his girl. And now OP is torn on what he should do? To be honest, your girlfriend is right. What was the expectation that your best friend had? That she's going to leave you and go with him? There is literally no benefit in confessing while knowing she's in a relationship. Your girlfriend is also right in that he disrespected your relationship. OP says, I'm just in disbelief. This guy has been like my family for eight years now. We were there for each other through tough times, and now he does this? Look, at some point he decided that the chance to be with her was more valuable than his friendship with you. Back up to the post, we have an edit. Thank you guys. I accept I was being a tool in how I responded to the situation. He was my best friend, but in this case, he behaved like a stranger who had absolutely no concern or respect for my relationship. It will be hurtful to let the friendship go, but I know this is what needs to happen. As for my girlfriend, I will apologize to her for being a tool and maybe take her for a weekend pampering session. She's the best. And now on to the update. It's done. My best friend is out of my life. I had a conversation with him where he said that he would never have asked her to cheat on me, but he just wanted to get it out of his system. Apparently, he has been nursing a crush on her since we started dating, and that's why he's not even tried to date anyone else. I told him that he couldn't control his feelings, but he should have controlled his actions and kept it to himself, and then I blocked him. My girlfriend, on the other hand, is really weirded out by his confession. Anyways... That is my update. Also, I have a new best friend, my girlfriend. In the comments, she's probably weirded out because she considered him an actual friend. I wouldn't be surprised if she's feeling a sense of betrayal and anger while also thinking she somehow caused this. She didn't. Crushes are normal enough. He shouldn't have confessed. He could have moved on without needing to tell her, let alone doing it behind your back. As someone who's been in your girlfriend's shoes, it's normal to feel weirded out. I used to have a friend who I got along so well with, talk to him for hours on end at every party, all that jazz. Then he made advances at me several times, and now he's blocked and I haven't seen him for five years. But it also made our relationship before that seem rotten. Every hug hello, all our conversations. I keep and keep wondering if he had ulterior motives the entire time. If he listened to my input in group conversations about sex and fantasized about it. If he asked his friend I hooked up with about her night with me. If he only went on drunk walks with me because he wanted to get me alone somehow, and if I was just lucky someone else always wanted to tag along. He became very predatory in the end, and it can really cause some trust issues to find out that someone has always just been circling around you like a vulture, waiting for their chance to somehow get with you. It's a good thing you are so supportive of her, because that experience is still screwing with me and one of the big reasons I'm apprehensive about men now. Which sucks, because I don't want to be, but my alarm bells just go off a lot faster now and that emotional distance I feel is hard to bridge with just rational thoughts. I stopped having male friends altogether because, even after saying multiple times to him, you're like a brother, man. And never, I mean never dressing to impress, hoodies, no makeup, ponytail, etc., he's still, still admitting to have a crush on me even after him saying, oh, you're like a little sister, to me. It took years of him emailing me for him to finally get it that I don't want to be friends anymore. Don't get me wrong, he was nice, they always are and always will be, but to me it was enough to know that it's not possible to just be friends. It would happen with every dude that I tried befriending, and I just got tired of it. I don't even make eye contact with dudes at the gym, because it would eventually be the same story, just a different place. Our next post is titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my cousin I didn't care about his stupid figurine after he destroyed my book? I write as a hobby, and have done since I was little. It started as a way to cope with the many problems of my life, and I just kept doing it because I liked it. I have a cousin, Carl, 26 male, who loves figurines since he was a child. 
I never particularly cared about those kinds of things, but since we were children and we lived close to each other, we always played together and he often showed me his figurines, explaining to me how he got them, from what show, film, anime, whatever they're from, etc, etc. I never cared about it, but I saw that being able to talk about his passion with someone else made him happy, so I always tried to pay close attention and to fake interest. His passion for figurines is still alive today. The garage in his home is basically filled with figurines, and he even bought a 3D printer to print some gadget or figurine that he wanted bigger. Now, while I was in college, I had barely any time to write, but I started investing some more time into it once I was close to my graduation, and resumed writing consistently the book that I had started when I was 20. I began to talk to Carl about the story I was writing, and he initially seemed interested. Then completely lost interest, so I stopped mentioning it to him. Yesterday, I completed my book, and I decided to print a physical copy myself. A hardcover. I paid someone to draw a cover. It looked exactly like a book you could find in a library. It was my treasure, a proof that I achieved something. I brought it to my family house, where a bunch of my relatives from both sides of the family were staying. They were all very enthusiastic about the book, about me completing it after struggling with it for years. They even began to ask if I had any intention to bring it to an editor to publish it officially. Evidently, Carl got upset because everybody was talking about a book that he didn't care about, so he suddenly took the book, said he was sick of hearing us talk about it, and he threw it out of the window. It was raining outside, and the book landed in a puddle. I rushed to pick it up, but it was completely ruined. I snapped. I began to yell at him and told him the truth, that for years I had spent hours listening about his stupid figurines that I didn't care about and that he was such an a-hole for his actions. I told him that I hoped his whole collection get destroyed in a fire. Today, his parents came to me and refunded me the money for the book and apologized for his behavior. Now that I'm calm and collected though, I realize that I may have overreacted. He cared about having someone to talk about his figurines, and I was happy seeing him happy when he talked about them. Am I the a-hole? In the comments, not the a-hole. Carl's irrational jealousy over your success is something he needs to work on. OP says, what success? You finished a book. Whether you ever decide to submit it for publication is besides the point, you wrote a book. That is a lot of time and effort. Oh, and most definitely not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. You have spent hours listening to him about what he finds interesting. However, he couldn't even listen to it for one day? Carl's a butthole. Even after having time to reflect upon learning that his cousin didn't really share his hobby, but was being incredibly supportive, he didn't apologize or replace the book. His parents did. And it was so childish. I had to go back to read The Age. He's throwing things because everyone was talking about a book that he didn't care about. He's 26. I went into the story sure that we were going to hear about two younger kids, not two adults, one of whom apparently can't hack listening to someone talking about a different passion. He is definitely the a-hole here, and incredibly, concerning, if I'm being honest, immature. Not the a-hole. Quote, before I start, this is a petty discussion, and I'm probably the a-hole for disturbing all of you with this problem. No, we are perfectly fine with petty around here. It beats listening to abusers trying to justify themselves. Anyway, with regards to the actual situation, it's understandable that Carl was jealous. It must have been frustrating for him to watch all of your relatives fawning over you when only one of them, i.e. you, ever took time to listen to his passions. What is not understandable, nor acceptable, is him taking your book and throwing it in a puddle. It doesn't matter if you made the book yourself or not, that's abhorrent. With consideration that you did write it yourself, and even went as far as to commission a cover for it, that just makes everything an order of magnitude worse. Frankly, the only thing you could have done that would have even made this everyone sucks, much less for anyone to call you the butthole, is if you went and destroyed his collection as revenge. Your response was well-deserved, at worst. Carl mistreated the only person who took an interest in his interests, who might have been the only friend in the family that he actually had. 
Why people do this, I have no idea. I'm sure it has something to do with the familiarity and abuse slash power dynamics, but I see this crap all the time. OP says, just wanted to point something out. He shares his hobby with his parents and they gladly listen to him. It's just that I'm the only one in the family who is close in age, so I'm the one who he shared his hobby the most. Back up to the post, we have an edit. He just called and apologized, said he has an idea on how to make amends and will do it in the next few days. I don't know if I should be scared, happy, or something else. And now on to the update. So a month has passed and things have been solved, so I thought an update was needed. Carl came to my house one week ago. He apologized and brought gifts. A new physical copy of my book. Now, this needs an explanation. Except for me, the only person who has a digital copy of my book is my older sister, Federica. Federica is a no bullcrap kind of person. If the chance of me forgiving Carl were 1 out of 10, the chance of my sister doing the same things were 1 out of 1,000. When he told me that he convinced my sister to give him a copy to reprint, I was astonished. A full collection of figurines of the main cast of my story. There are five main characters in the story, and only two of them were on the cover that I printed, which meant that he read the book and drew slash had someone else draw a sketch of the other three characters in order to make their figurine. They are 25 centimeters tall, and I admit they look really good. He paid me back for the physical copy that he destroyed. I asked him why he was giving me the money since he had just given me a new copy and his parents had already paid me. He said that the new copy was in place of the one that he destroyed while the money was an apology. He apologized for what he did that day and explained to me his reasons, a mix of jealousy and bad timing. Things is still not completely fine, but they are better. He thanked me for bearing his hobby all of these years. I apologized for losing my temper and insulting his hobby. While I don't share his passion over figurines, I can understand how much love that he puts in every one of them. He looked sincere in his apology, and we parted amicably. I decided to give back to his parents the money they originally gave me as an apology. I spent a couple of hours choosing what to do with the five figurines that he gave me. For now, I put the two original on my desk, and the other three on the top shelf of my library. I have to admit, having figurines made about my own book is really cool, and I spent quite a lot of time looking at them in the past week. I want to thank all of you for your support on the original post. Bye. In the comments, Aw, that's actually a sweet apology from your cousin. Sounds subversive as hell to me. He just found a way to drag OP into the deep dark world of figurines. <laughs> Sarcasm. It is really a nice way of apologizing though. He didn't stop at a heartfelt apology and restitution, a cold label but best fit. He helped bring more life to the characters that OP spent years creating. Shows a lot of appreciation for the relationship between him and OP. Wow, that was actually a very awesome way for him to apologize in the only manner in which he could, by making figurines based on your book. Well done and thank you for your update. For once, a real apology is given on Reddit. I feel like I barely see these outcomes. Honestly, this is such a heartfelt apology, way beyond what I expected. Were the figurines painted? I asked because I paint some, while I have a friend who paints them professionally. It's usually at least two hours to paint each one, or on the low end, my friend charges 25 Canadian dollars an hour to paint other people's. Also, designing mini flags, even with one of those programs that lets you choose everything, takes a decent amount of time and effort. I just used one to design five custom D&D figures as gifts, and I sunk hours into it. And then, the fact that he also went and basically put himself in front of the firing squad that is your sister? Huh. <sighs> Needless to say, the amount of thought, work, and dedication in this apology should really show how badly he feels about what he did and how much he knows that it hurt you. OP replies, quote, in front of the firing squad that is your sister. I think that's the best description of my sister that I have ever heard. It goes without saying that you seem a cool as person whose book I'd probably enjoy reading, but I like the sound of Federica too. Outside of the novel Defenestration, Carl sounds okay too I guess. 
Am I the a-hole for not wanting to name my unborn daughter after my husband's high school girlfriend? So my husband, 35, and I, 31, are about to be first-time parents as I'm currently 35 weeks pregnant. We found out it was a girl and my husband suggested the name Tiffany. I immediately fell in love with the name. I asked him where he got it from and he told me that he heard it while watching a movie and it stuck with him. I didn't think much of it. We decided that we both loved the name and that it was going to be our little girl's name. However, a few days ago, my sister-in-law and I were talking on FaceTime and we got onto the topic of the name. She mentioned how surprised she was that I agreed to that name because she'd never want to name a child after her husband's high school girlfriend. I was really confused at first and asked her what the heck she meant. She told me that my husband dated a girl named Tiffany from 10th grade until they were juniors in college. While I knew my husband had a long relationship in high school and college, I never knew the girl's name. My sister-in-law could tell how upset I was and assumed that my husband told me where he got the name from. I told her that he told me that he heard it from a movie and he never mentioned that it was his ex-girlfriend's name. She apologized and told me that she didn't mean to upset me. I wasn't upset with her though. I was and still am so angry at my husband. After hanging up, I confronted my husband and asked him if what his sister said is true. He tried to blow it off at first, but eventually admitted that it is true. We argued back and forth for a while before I told him that I would not name my daughter after his ex-girlfriend and I refused to use the name Tiffany anymore. He tried to convince me that it wasn't a big deal, but it is to me because one, he lied to me about where the name came from, two, I don't want to look at my daughter every day and remember that she's named after my husband's ex-girlfriend, and three, it makes me feel like he still loves her. As far as I know, they are not in contact and haven't been since they broke up. He told me that I was overreacting, acting like a child, and that I can't change my mind now since I'm due in five weeks. I feel hurt and betrayed. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to name my daughter after my husband's ex-girlfriend? In the comments, not the a-hole. If he thought that it wouldn't be an issue that it was his ex-girlfriend's name, he wouldn't have lied about it, plain and simple. He deceived you into agreeing to the name, he continued to lie when you confronted him, and now he's trying to force you to keep the name with ridiculous logic. You can't change your mind five weeks before giving birth? What kind of BS is that? Even if you would have been okay with the name originally had he been honest, now it's tainted by the fact that he lied to you about it. Is he usually like this? OP says, I would normally say he's not usually like this at all, but now that I'm thinking about it, he has been acting weird for the past few months and has been kind of distant. I have no idea what to do at this point. I feel completely clueless and lost. Sounds like a situation for couples counseling to me. OP says, I'll mention that to him. He's always been against any kind of counseling though, so I doubt that conversation will go well. But thank you for your comments. They're appreciated a lot. You understand the alternative as saying, oh well, let's just forget this forever then. Agree to disagree though, right? Check if it's the hill that you need to die on. I definitely won't forget that this happened, and I think that it's important that we do attend some kind of counseling. I'm just not sure how I can get him to go, and I'm due in five weeks, or she could come earlier, and with the quarantine, I'm not even sure when we could go to counselling, but I don't want to put this off either. I feel way too betrayed just to let this go. OP, I know how easy it is to make excuses. You're pregnant, exhausted, you want to be happy about your new baby. There are plenty of reasons to push this aside and put it off, but you have to make a firm stand and show your husband you won't be pushed around. As vulnerable as you are now, you are going to be 100% more vulnerable once you actually have a baby to take care of. I know it's hard, but it's important to show him that you mean business. Thank you so much for this comment. It's true that part of me just wants to move on and forget about it, especially since people are bringing up good points about the fact that he may be in contact with her, because I'm only weeks away from giving birth to our baby, and this isn't how I planned it to go at all. But your comment made me realize how much I absolutely can't push this aside. I used the last few hours to just relax, but I'll be talking to him again shortly. I appreciate your comment. Thank you. Not the a-hole. He's definitely still got some type of feelings for her. I would see a couples therapist if I was y'all. 
please change the name and don't enable him slash whatever he is holding on to. That's what I'm worried about. I've never been insecure about his old relationships, but finding out that he tried to name our daughter after his ex-girlfriend made me feel so small and insignificant. I'll mention couples therapy, but he's always been against any kind of counseling, so I doubt that conversation will go well. Hey OP, just an FYI, my parents changed their mind about my name a couple of weeks after I was born, and I'm a perfectly well-adjusted person, but for my addiction to this site. So please don't let him guilt you into anything citing time as the reason, not the a-hole. OP says, thank you for your comment. It's very reassuring. I was feeling guilty about wanting to change the name so close to the birth because he keeps making comments about the time frame, but your comment made me feel better, so thank you. Back up to the post, we have an edit. After I finally got him to admit the truth, I asked him why he wanted to use that name in the first place, and he told me because he thought that it was pretty, and that his ex-girlfriend was such a good person that he wanted to name our daughter after her, but thought that I wouldn't agree to it, which I don't. So he told me that he heard it from a movie, instead of just being honest. Edit 2, I just wanted to thank everyone so much for the support. Reading through your comments has really helped me realize that I'm not going to be manipulated into naming my daughter anything but what feels right to me. My husband slept over at his parents' guest house last night, because the quarantine. He didn't go near his parents, don't worry, because I felt like I needed some time away from him. I'm going to talk to him when he gets home today though. I'll update everyone once we've had a chance to talk and let you all know what ends up happening. In the meantime, I posted on Name Nerds to get some ideas for new names. I'm really excited to look into names, so if you'd like to suggest any new names, you can find my post on my profile. I would love any and all suggestions. And now, on to the update. A lot of people have mentioned that he might be cheating on me with his ex-girlfriend, or he still has feelings for her. I thought about it a lot, and based on how he's been acting these past few months, they might have a point. So, when my husband got back from spending the night at his parents' guest house, he had no contact with his parents, I demanded that we have a serious talk. It was pointless at first. I basically just kept repeating the same thing over and over again as he refused to comment on anything that I said. Finally, I asked him if he was cheating on me. He immediately denied it, but I didn't believe him. I continued to pester him about it, and he finally admitted that he has been texting his ex-girlfriend for a little bit, but that's it. Again, there was no way that I was going to believe him. I asked him how long they've been in contact. He told me not long, but I wanted a real answer, so I asked him again. He told me for a few months. Basically, from what he told me, he was in contact with her for a few days before we found out it was a girl, and that's why he suggested the name Tiffany to me. We found out that it was a girl at 22 weeks, and I'm now 35 weeks pregnant, so he's been talking to her for about 13 weeks behind my back. I basically just cried and kept asking him questions to get as much information about it as I could. He kept trying to avoid each question, but I finally got answers out of him. He told me that she contacted him because she was getting married and was having second thoughts. My husband admitted to me that talking to her made him realize that he never stopped having feelings for her, but that he loves me too, and the reason he suggested the name Tiffany to me was because he knew that he couldn't leave me to be with her, so he wanted something to honor her with. Which doesn't make sense because it sounds like she's freaking dead when she isn't. I made him show me the messages, and they were flirty with hearts and winks, but nothing was sexual. From what he told me, his ex went through with getting married, and they both knew they couldn't be together again, but they enjoyed talking with each other. We both ended up crying, and he kept begging me not to leave him, but it's wrong. It's so wrong. I don't know what to do. I'm lost. Completely. I tried to get him to leave for a few days and go back to his parents' guest house, but he refused. Now I'm sleeping in the guest bedroom which only has a twin bed because he's refusing to sleep anywhere but the master bedroom because he wants to go back to normal. I just… I feel like my entire world has collapsed and I know people will tell me to leave him or divorce him, but I'm five weeks away from giving birth to our daughter, and with the pandemic happening, I don't know what to do. I need help. The stress and emotional pain is making my stomach and back ache, and I feel like I'm going to throw up. 
I feel so, so, so hurt and confused and betrayed. What should I do? Please help. I apologize if this post is all over the place. I'm just way too upset to actually care. If I left out important information or if you have any questions, I'll answer anything. I just need advice and guidance. In the comments, this guy is only going to say what you want to hear, and what's worse, he's trying to manipulate you into accepting that his behavior is normal along the way. It seems like he's going to jump at the first opportunity, but he's too much of a coward to do anything that doesn't feel safe. And that included not staying with you when another relationship started to look possible again. You became the unsafe option at that time, and then it seems he realized that he would actually need to put an effort with this other person too. And it sounds like the other woman was ultimately the one who decided to go through with her marriage. The way you describe him telling you about this, it wasn't something that he realized was wrong for himself. What if she hadn't gone through with her wedding? Have you thought about where you might be right now? Do you really want to be with something like that for the rest of your life? Just waiting for the other shoe to drop? Wondering if he'll get brave enough to abandon you? Or if he'll always be too much of a coward to leave? He's already thinking about other options, even ones that he's dismissed in the past, that aren't even available. A new woman would probably be even more entertaining to him. In the meantime, he wants to name your daughter after the one who got away. You really don't need to know any more information now. You know enough that you would be acting within your rights and well within the realms of logic and common sense, and you would be making the responsible decision to begin the process of separating from this person. I am so sorry that you needed to find all this out in such a troubling way. If he couldn't make better decisions, not only for you, but not even for his unborn daughter right now, which is a huge milestone, then there's really very little hope that a situation will ever arise where he'll finally come to his senses. It's genuinely incredible how not uncommon it seems that men want to name their daughters after affair partners and previous relationships. I wonder what the thought process is behind that, because I simply cannot imagine the audacity that I would need to even suggest such a thing. My ex's mums had a sister named after their dad's affair partner, he wanted to prove his love to his mistress, so he named his daughter with his wife after her. That was the explanation he gave. Mistress loved having that over the wife, according to my ex's mom. Well, of course I'm 100% committed to you. I just really need a constant reminder of what could have been. Stop overreacting! ETA, this post ties in thematically with the recent post about the woman whose boyfriend demanded a paternity test and then couldn't understand why their relationship isn't stronger than ever. If you pretend long enough, the relationship will just fix itself, right? Could you imagine if your stepmom slash person your dad left your mom for had the same name as you because you were named after them? What was the dad thinking? I actually still have feelings for this person, so I will name my kid after them. OP's husband be like, I named you after the prettiest, kindest, most wonderful person I know. And the kid's like, mommy's not the prettiest, kindest, and most wonderful person you know? And OP's husband's like, mommy's special in her own way. Gross! <laughs> That's what Adam Levine was going to do with the child that he had with his wife. He suggested naming it after the girl that he was cheating with. 